Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's Token Post interview. Today we have invited Mr. Samson Mao, the CSO of Blockstream. Welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> so, before we get on to the interview, could you give a brief introduction about yourself and how you got into the crypto business? Sure. So, uh, my background is actually the game industry. Mm -hmm. I started out in the game industry, uh, but I was in China for a while working for Ubisoft, and mm -hmm. um, I had a friend there called Bobby, and mm -hmm. he is actually the CEO of BTC China. So I started out as an advisor to the company, and then later I joined as COO. So I was running the exchange and mining units there. But that's how I got into <laughs> the industry. That's like 20, early 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, before you got into crypto, is it okay if I ask what kind of like gaming industry you were in? Yeah, uh, I was doing real-time strategy games. I actually still have a game company in Shanghai. Oh, really? It's uh, about 20-something people, and uh, we operate some games in China. Mm. Yeah. So... Let's move on to about your platform. Uh, so what is Blockstream and what do you plan to achieve from that pl uh, platform? So Blockstream is primarily a blockchain infrastructure company. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, we do lots of things that will make Bitcoin better. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, all, we contribute to Bitcoin um, protocol development. We have one person full-time working on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two people full-time working on Lightning. It's a level two scaling solution for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in general, everything we're trying to do it does feed back into Bitcoin to make Bitcoin better. So we have Liquid. It's a side chain. It's a blockchain peg to Bitcoin, one to one ratio. Mm -hmm. And what that allows, um, it, it's for exchanges to do inter-exchange settlement. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows institutions, um, traders, and you know, exchanges themselves to move Bitcoins rapidly between one another. Mm -hmm. um, we have Elements. It's a blockchain platform. We have Green Address, a Bitcoin wallet. <laughs> And we have Blockstream Satellite, which mm -hmm. is a satellite service that broadcasts Bitcoin blocks oh. through uh, geosynchronous satellites. So mm -hmm. it's like a redundancy to Bitcoin. Oh. So that's why we're a blockchain infrastructure company, but mm -hmm. everything we do kind of ties into Bitcoin. Mm. <laughs> so our viewers might not be familiar with the concept of sidechain and a peg. So yeah. could you explain a little bit about that? Okay, sure. So Blockstream was essentially founded... Um, based on this white paper we wrote, uh, it's called Strong Federations. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that you can secure um, a sidechain through uh, federated signing, essentially, mm -hmm. instead of like proof of work where you're mining the sidechain. Mm -hmm. So Liquid is 21 million Bitcoins, mm -hmm. and Bitcoin is also 21 million. Mm -hmm. So you lock up one Bitcoin on, on this chain, mm -hmm. and essentially you've pegged it into Liquid. And then you have one Bitcoin in Liquid, which you can transact under... A different rule set. So in Liquid, it's one minute block time. So it's very fast mm -hmm. and stable uh, transaction times. Mm -hmm. And that's good for people trying to take advantage of arbitrage opportunities because you don't have to wait for a block to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, you just wait one minute and it's confirmed and you can move your money rapidly between different exchanges uh, and institutions in the network. Mm -hmm. So uh, you explained about how you're locking up Bitcoin and then moving it to uh, liquid coin, was it? Uh, it's, it's also Bitcoin, but inside a different blockchain. So would it prevent any uh, uh, duplicate spending or double spending measures? Uh, because it's indeed copying the asset into another chain. Yeah, so Bitcoin has the double spend protection, right? You wait for the confirmations, and then yes. uh, unless the chain is attacked, then you won't have a double spend. Mm -hmm. In liquid, the blocks are signed by the federation. Mm -hmm. So as long as two thirds of them sign the block, then It'll extend the blockchain, mm -hmm. and it's also immune to the same problem. So you won't have the double spend. Oh, okay. um, even less prone to double spending, I think, than Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So you guys are a open source platform. Uh, Elements, the software platform, was rele released recently. Mm -hmm. So what is it, and how does it work? So Elements essentially is like a um, experimental R and D playground mm -hmm. where we build all of the things that we're working on, and we release it to the public. Mm -hmm. um, so they can also experiment with it. So uh, C Lightning, it's our implementation of Lightning. It's also in Elements. Uh, we have a, a series of LAPS, mm -hmm. Lightning applications. Um, like you can uh, pay to view content through Lightning, download uh, digital assets, mm -hmm. or you know, lots of different things. But all those different apps are in Elements. So it's just a place where people can um, take the code and experiment and develop on top of it. Oh, so it's like a Developer-wise, it's where somebody can just, I want to try to make a, some, I say, a, a cooking platform. <laughs> they can just take from the Elements source and then use it to create their own Yeah, so, so Liquid is based off of Elements. Mm -hmm. uh, but technically, you could take Elements and build your own Liquid-like federation. 
Uh, do Element or the Element platform have some sort of its own token economy or? No, it's just uh, open source software. Mm -hmm. You could, you can issue a token <laughs> in that blockchain mm -hmm. if you want. So, you guys uh, focus priority on finance, uh, we Bitcoin trading wise. Mm -hmm. So, do you guys have any plans improving upon the realms of Bitcoin into other blockchains, maybe? Uh, so you mean like improving trading? Uh, I mean moving on to another chain so that it can uh, act with interact with other chains. Hmm. I don't really know if we're working on anything like that per se. Mm -hmm. um, you can do atomic swaps over Lightning. Oh, okay. Uh, also, in Liquid, we have a feature called issue assets where you can issue tokens in the Liquid blockchain. Mm -hmm. So you could do atomic swaps within Liquid as well potentially. Um, but uh, aside from interoperability with other blockchains, that's mm -hmm. not really something we're really focused on. The innovation that Bitcoin brings is you know, sound money. Mm -hmm. That's why we're more, fo more focused on financial, uh, oh, okay. financial aspects of different applications you can do with uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. Mm -hmm. So your presentation is, well, mainly deals with future outlook on the blockchain. So how do you view the future of blockchain industry? Well, I think uh, a lot of people are getting into it. I think uh, not every single application of the technology makes sense right now. I see a lot of uh, white papers and things floating around that just kind of, uh, you're just kind of wondering why, why they're doing that. But I'm giving a talk a bit later about you know, the fundamental reasons why you would want a blockchain. Mm -hmm. And one of those is to rethink trust. So changing the trust model. Uh, removing trusted third parties. Mm -hmm. And if your blockchain product or project does not really do that, mm -hmm. then maybe it does not require a blockchain. Mm -hmm. So your statement is that when investing, you should focus on what problem it solves and how it's applied in the real world. Uh, essentially, yeah. So it's like a startup. If you want to do a startup, mm -hmm. you should not just pick a technology and build something, right? Mm -hmm. If you're doing a startup, you should find a problem to solve in the world mm -hmm. and solve that problem better than other people can solve it mm -hmm. and choose the right technology to accomplish that goal, right? Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of um, blockchain projects these days are kind of going at it backwards saying, what kind of fancy things can we do on this project uh -huh. on a blockchain? Mm -hmm. And the fundamental thing they miss the most is removing that trust element, right? And a lot of private blockchains also uh, kind of gloss that over. Mm -hmm. like they just built a blockchain, but still it might be under control of you know, a few parties or a company. And in that sense, they can reverse transactions or roll things back, mm -hmm. which you cannot do on a, a public blockchain. So when evaluating a project, uh, what would be the key factors that you would consider it into if, you're, uh, if you were an investor? Well, I would probably look towards more projects that are doing something related to Bitcoin, mm -hmm. uh, doing things related to Lightning. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, another thing that people miss on is blockchains don't scale well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a friend who's thinking about doing a payments network mm -hmm. and he wanted to use a blockchain and I said you should not use that <laughs> because you won't be able to do millions and millions of transactions a second uh, for things like people buying a coffee or mm -hmm. spending a dollar. So I'm kind of curious to ask since you're deeply related to Bitcoin, do you know who Satoshi Nakamoto is? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have been, uh, a lot of people who have been flagged as Satoshi mm -hmm. Nakamoto, but I haven't, I, I don't think any of those people are Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> but definitely I know anyone that says they are Satoshi Nakamoto <laughs> is not Satoshi Nakamoto. So do you have any guesses? Your own personal guess. No guesses. <laughs> no guesses. Mr. Mao, thank you so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Samson Mao, the CSO of Blockstream. Thank, thank you. you.